Hi, I'm Ross from Energy Matters. Welcome to our podcast, Road to Zero, where we dive headfirst into all things renewable. Join us as we chat with industry experts, tech specialists, and some of your favorite TV and radio personalities asking the renewable energy questions that you want answers to. Our goal, a zero carbon future. Today, I am absolutely delighted to be chatting to Chris Giorgio, Business Development and Account Manager for Yingli Green Energy Australia. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Good morning. Yeah, good, Rashan. Good. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me. Mate, you're very welcome. Are you based in Melbourne, Chris? Or are you in Sydney? Uh, no, based in Sydney, actually. Um, well, it's a lot yeah. warmer in Sydney, I believe, than it is here. It's, uh, I think we had four degrees this morning. Right, right. We had a cold snap yesterday, but not not that bad. So, um, count our yeah. blessings. Yeah. You guys are lucky. Um, yeah. Chris, uh, we've come across each other a few times, mainly at the um, ex various exhibitions and conferences, which is yeah. which is pretty cool. And it's good to see Ying Lee there. Uh, before we get too stuck into Ying Lee and find out more about the company itself, a bit of background on yourself, mate. Can you tell uh, anyone who doesn't know you a little bit more about you, your background, um, and, or edu career to date, and uh, what led you to Ying Lee? Yeah, definitely. So you could say my kind of journey started um, back in uni. So I studied here in Sydney, in um, Sydney University, and mainly doing mechanical engineering. Um, so oh, wow. especially my final year of uni, I got very interested in the renewable energy subjects, took a lot of electives and became kind of obsessed with this idea of being 100% renewable. Um, and the idea that you can power the whole world without fossil fuels and just being um, self-sufficient. So um, that's where I kind of caught the bug. And then uh, first job out of uni was at a tech startup company called ShineHub. And I was basically selling solar and battery systems to typical homeowners, your mums and dads. Um, but also we had a focus on virtual power plants or, or VPPs as we call them. And that's all about um, developing a system for energy sharing between households that have batteries and have solar. So I got to learn a lot about you know, panels, inverters, batteries, but also the future vision for, um, for renewable energy here, which was really good. And then a couple of years ago, I left that company and kind of went out on my own, did a bit of consulting for different various companies. And I was kind of replicating what we were achieving at ShineHub in a way, teaching other companies um, how to do the same. And then about a year ago is when I joined Ying Li and now learning the whole other side of the, the business, which is the supplier, manufacturer um, side of, of the supply chain as well, which has been really good. What attracted you to Ying Li in the first place? I mean, what, what, what was it about them that sort of had you think, you know what, I'm uh, going to give up the flexibility, flexible work of consulting um, to work directly for a manufacturer? Yeah, well, I'd sort of been in the residential field for so long, um, in about five years at that time. So I knew that I wanted to kind of change and get out of that and learn something different. So um, being on the supplier end was really attractive. And then I was doing my research, you know, different panel companies out there. And, you know, Yingli had just been around for so long. So been around for 26 years now, one of the first um, kind of pioneers of solar. And they'd been leading the market even from the early days in 1998 when they started. So that was kind of the obvious choice as a as a market leader to um to join Ying Lee. Fantastic. And uh you're having fun so far? Having a lot of fun. Yeah, you probably know some of our team members, George, Farney, Andy as well. So yeah, yeah, they're, they're teaching me a lot of stuff. Um it's been really good. Which is absolutely great. And the the, the one thing that's so sort of been present to me in all my interactions with Ying Lee is um how relaxed an organization you are. Uh, but, but with such a strong commitment towards, you know, towards the, you know, the, the growth of renewable energy in Australia and, of course, globally. So it's really that great balance where it's a very, you know, pleasant organisation to work with. And um, and at the same token, you know, with such a strong dedication towards the goal um, and obviously a commitment for quality, you know, quality components. I mean, talking about the panels themselves, I mean, a little bit of background on Ying Lee. I mean, whereabouts are they based, where are the panels manufactured? Can you tell us a little bit more about them? Yeah, sure. So the um, head office uh, HQ is in China, in Baoding, which is pretty close to Beijing, actually, um, in the north. And then our local Australian office is here in Sydney, where, where I am, um, in Town Hall, if anyone uh, is familiar with Sydney. Um, so, yeah, from our local team here, we have a full team of support, um, logistics, engineering, uh, after-sales support for warranty claims and all that as well. Um, and we've been now situated here for since 2012. So long 
and a history in Australia um, that Yingli's had as well. Which is so important. I mean, we have, you know, what, watching this today or listening to this today would be a, a huge, you know, consumer audience, you know, home homeowners, business owners, people that either have solar power ready or are looking at solar power on a future on a future project, as well as retailers and installers. And I think what a lot of people aren't aware of is, you know, you know, getting the panels, fire distribution is, is important. But, you know, really where you really need the manufacturer is if anything was to go wrong. And it doesn't happen very often these days, but it's so reassuring to know that there is that Australian presence and especially a well-established one such as you guys, which is in a central location such as Sydney, so that that support is available. So good on you for doing it. I mean, what, how have you found, I mean, and the, I mean, you've only been here um, at Yingli for a short time, but from um, understanding with your team, I mean, what, you know, how, how many panels do you see externally, maybe even outside of Ying Lee, um, are being hit with warranty claims and have issues over time? I mean, on, yeah, on, on Ying Lee's side, as far as I know, we haven't had any kind of systemic technical issues. Um, so the, you get the odd panel here and there, but nothing where we've had to do recalls or um, whole production lines had to shut down, which is, which is really good. Um, we, we typically get, we, we keep a bit of old stock just in case, but we, you know, pretty rare. We might get one every few months um, coming back as a warranty claim. So we have a, an in-house engineer that takes care of all that as well and, and makes that process very easy and smooth um, to, to make a claim if anything does go wrong. So No, that's absolutely fantastic. And um, drilling down on Yingli a little bit more, I mean, for, for, well, before I get into that, Beijing, have you been out on a company trip yet? Have they, uh, have they taken you, brought you out to head office? Oh, unfortunately not yet. Um, they just had the SNEC uh, event in China, which is the yes. biggest one I think in the world maybe. Um, yes, but I, uh, I missed out on that one, but I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be at the next one next year. So um, that's exciting. But my, uh, George and Tim, they visited the, the warehouse last year as well, and they saw all the different kind of the, the manufacturing line and the, um, the recycling plant as well, which I can talk about a bit later as well. Yeah, um, wow. What we're building, yeah. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. That's music to my ears, Chris. As you know, uh, you know, we've got you guys on the TV show and we definitely want to, uh, you know, sort of film a film in China if we can. So we'd love to see that recycling plant, hint, hint. Um, so I will. Uh, yeah, I think it's worth doing a story on. It's actually, um, yeah, quite interesting. Yeah. Oh, my God, absolutely. I mean, it's fantastic. And I, I suppose all the um, the doubters out there would say, oh, you know, it's all well and good that you got, you know, that renewable energy is going to power the planet. But you know, you've, it's been manufactured with coal and, you know, what happens when it gets to end of life, it's just going to go onto the scrap heap and be part of, um, you know, be part of the problem, not the solution, which we all know is not the case. I mean, maybe really a long time ago, things weren't broken down to be, you know, 99% re um, recyclable, like they pretty much are now, if not more so. Um, but before we get into the data, uh, we're, we're talking to the uh, the ones I love, love the industry and are kind of keen to know more about Ying Lee. Can you tell us a little bit more about your module specifically? I mean, what differentiates those from other panels on the marketplace? Yeah, well, differentiators, I guess for, for us as a company, um, Ying Lee, the big thing that sets us apart would be the level of experience. So as I mentioned, over 25 years now in the manufacturing panels. Um, so we actually have been around longer than our 25 year warranties which is not a lot of manufacturers can really say that. They've been around for that long um, to back that up. And then especially when it comes to experience with the N-type technology. So if you look at what's happening now, there's been a shift from the old P-type or PERC modules yeah. um, now towards more the N-type top con, which is a high performance panel. And that's just because the, the price is now becoming at parity where it's, it's worthwhile. Um, but a lot of companies have only been making N types for maybe two or three years, whereas Ying Li's been now doing it for over ten years. Um, kind of led the way in the early days, and we've got a lot of examples like the Star Trek house here in Sydney. Um, that's a N type system, Ying Li, uh, over ten years old, still going strong. So we've got yeah, right. really good case studies here on Australian rooftops um, that have sort of demonstrated that track record um, with N type. Yeah. yeah. Which is absolutely fantastic, and the kind of I know from the fact that your tech is, you know, both um, both reliable, very you know, sort of very efficient, you know, produces like a significant amount of energy per square in a square meter, which is essentially what you're looking for, you know, when you are a consumer trying to maximize your roof space and get as much as you can. And we are going to be featuring um, some amazing panels on an upcoming episode of Open Homes Australia. In fact, tomorrow 
Um, so and having reference television already, so it's nice to see um, different projects installed with different, you know, with our different manufacturing partners like yourself. Uh, before we talk more about open homes, um, let's play a quick preview to anyone who's watching. Um, you can see the preview and hear some stuff. If you're only listening, I apologize. At least there is some music. Have a listen to this and a watch to this. On this episode of Open Homes, some Spanish inspiration in Melbourne, breathtaking views on Phillip Island, a tiny house with big ideas. Roller coaster ride. And to finish, a special tour of House One from the Block 2023. Well, now we're standing inside, right? It's quite beautiful. It's hard to believe, but Kyle and Leslie did not win one room for an entire season. Come with us as we step inside. Well, for anyone um, watching tomorrow, I won't give away which of those three homes it is, but I will hint that it may be a tiny home with big ideas. Um, Chris, the, the home we filmed was absolutely insane. I mean, for me, walking up to that place for the first time, I did have, you know, sort of flashbacks of Doctor Who, you know, when you sort of like see the TARDIS and then you go inside and all of a sudden you've got this massive house. Like the place was on what four by five square meters of you know of um, surface area, and then just really really tall. Um, mm -hmm. Also featured panels as part of the facade, which I've never seen before. So it's talk about utilization of space. Um, it was absolutely incredible. Um, firstly, can you tell me a little bit more about why you guys ch chose to get involved in Open Homes Australia? Yeah, so I guess for us, like the whole reason we wanted to do a segment was just to get that message across to the to the consumer to the residential homeowner that you really it really is possible now to power your entire house and all your needs just from a solar and a battery system um, and achieve energy independence so we looked, did our research looked at some of your other um, programs and I think that message was quite aligned with what we were trying to do so that's why yeah working with you guys is sort of a, a no-brainer no, good man. Well, look, we, we love working with you as well. And that home was super inspiring. I mean, can you tell us a little bit more about the panels um, featured on the actual show? Yeah, definitely. So you would have seen, and as the viewers will see um, tomorrow on the show, um, so Ralph Alfonso, he's the guy that built the house. And um, basically it's it's designed as an eco home. So it's multi-level uh, and, and only a tiny little footprint, like you said, five by four metres. Uh, but he built everything very sustainably. So even the geothermal heating that they'll see, they've actually drilled into the ground and using the the mass of the of the earth to actually keep the, the house um, cool and, and warm. So, um, but because of that that very tiny footprint that he had, he needed the most efficient panel that they could possibly uh, get. And at the time, that was the Panda N-type Ying Li module, um, like I mentioned. Um, so that module there was a 270 watt. But the, the equivalent module that, we've, that we're creating now is actually a 440 watt in power. Um, wow. So, yeah, massive kind of improvement in that 10-year period. Um, uh, but it is the same, you know, fu fundamentally the same technology, uh, N-type technology that we were using 10 years ago, which is now just becoming the most popular um, kind of panel technology out there. So, yeah. Which is absolutely amazing. And even, even chatting to Ralph, I mean, his his strategy and plan for the future is to, um, you know, in the near future, is to remove those panels, um, put on the new the new Ying Li for forties, but then re actually reuse the existing panels on another project, all right? Which is which is kind of music to our ears because from his point of view, those panels are performing perfectly fine, um, so they're doing their job. It just means he can get a little bit more wattage from the surface area that he currently has, and then just use those panels to power another project which is exactly the way we love to hear, you know, how solar panels are being used. You know, it's uh, all well and good to upgrade to the next technology. But fundamentally, if those panels are still performing, which they are, and then why not just take full, full advantage of that and, um, and then use that for something else? So that's absolutely awesome. I mean, how do you find, in that particular project, um, as a good example, I mean, how do you find your, you know, your particular panels help the typical household? Yeah, well, that was that particular case was sort of an extreme example, but um, like, like you said, the the ability to have very high power, high performance panels, which is what the N-type system gives you, um, you're actually getting more power for the same roof space. So 
customers that don't have that much roof space, they can access, um, you know, a larger system and power all their appliances. Um, these systems, they typically pay for themselves in three to four years. And then the warranties now are about 30 year performance warranties. So wow. you're getting, you know, over 20 years of, of free energy after that, um, after the system's paid for itself. So that's, that's the big one. And then the other one is also energy security because people now are struggling energy crisis and, and, and bills you know, keep going up. So if you're able to produce your own power in your, in your own house, that just protects you from that kind of instability um, with, the, with the energy prices as well. No, which is absolutely awesome. So if anyone um, who is able to sort of tune in um, tomorrow, so Saturday at 5 p.m. on Nine Life, um, and there will also be a rerun on Sunday at 2.30 p.m. also on Nine Life. And you can always jump onto our website, um, just Google Energy Matters, um, Open Homes Australia, and you'll be able to watch the segment um, after after it goes live, so probably on Monday next week. Um, it'll be on there as well as on YouTube and more than likely uh, you'll see it both on ours and the English social media. So it's absolutely fascinating. I, I suppose, once again, just to reiterate why people should watch it, um, it's more so how the panels have been used on the facade, which I've not seen before, but is absolutely super smart. So using the panels both on the roof as as like, a, you know, I don't want to give up too, too much away, but really it's so super smart how um, how they've looked at the design of this home in its entirety and then utilised the components, including the solar panels to their full effect for both the visual as energy as well as really understanding how else they could be used, um, potentially even as like shade from the sun. So it's pretty smart. So um, a couple of quick questions, Chris, just more so dig, uh, digging down into Ying Lee. So like our customers, our audience are always looking for new and cutting edge technology. Um, is there anything in a pipeline for Ying Lee that will take your offerings to a new level? Yeah, well, I was just going to mention as well, he, it was pretty impressive that he managed to power a hot tub um, with this these panels as well. So, oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah, so imagine when you have the power output, you probably get two hot tubs. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, in terms of cutting edge, like we do, we invest a lot in our R&D, and that's why um, we're always kind of at the at the forefront of technology. But the big thing that we're um, doing with these new panels, the 440 N-types, is they're also bifacial panels. Um, so what that means is that the, the panels absorb light on the front and on the back side of the panel. So especially if they're slightly tilted, you can actually boost your performance on a cloudier day. Um, and it's also double glass. So the, instead of having a traditional plastic back sheet, we've actually replaced that with a glass back sheet. And what that allows uh, you to do is actually protect the panel from you know, water ingress, humidity, um, and you know all the Australian kind of harsh conditions. And that just allows longevity for the panel. That's why we've boosted the performance warranty to um, 30 years instead of 25 years. So it's also got an industry leading um, warranty attached to the panel as well. Um, yeah, cutting. speaking of cutting edge, we also work on BIPV, um, maybe yep. not quite an interesting area, building integrated solar. And what that is, is sort of taking a high rise building or a commercial building and skinning the outside with basically solar panels and turning that building into a little power plant. So um, that's giving these, these building owners access to solar where they normally wouldn't have enough roof space to um, to utilize it so that's another area that we're really heavily working in as well which is absolutely awesome because I, I i currently live in an apartment we're about to move to our home um where i'm going to start my you know talked about renovating for for many episodes now and it's finally finally about to happen at least start the process and oh, um but I'll yeah, see you yeah i'm definitely going to be uh tapping ralph on the show it's in queensland unfortunately but it's uh oh, yeah. you know, ralph, can, ralph, ralph, ralph can come out on the road trip um, but it's um, but it's amazing. Even when we're in a uh, in an apartment, I mean, there's you know probably no one that's a small block, but really maybe about sort of fifty, you know, sort of fifty different apartments or units inside of that across you know three sort of buildings side by side, and um, very little roof space. I mean, obviously there's a lot of vents like um, vents up there, conditioning vents, and all sorts of other stuff that takes up the roof. You know, the extra surface area in the roof. So it really it always is a disappointment to know that you know that building isn't powered by solar. So understanding that you actually are investing and do have a solution for that inside of the BIPV is absolutely awesome. Because I know so many people would love to, you know, understand how they can actually benefit from solar power technology without the roof space. 
and it certainly sounds like that text there. Has there been much of that being sold in Australia? Is it still very, very new, or is that something that's kind of starting to come out of phase in slowly? Yeah, it's still a very new technology. So um, there's plenty of, of examples in China of, of this happening many years ago, but in Australia, we're just starting to take it up now. We're seeing tenders go in for, for these um, commercial buildings. There's one in Melbourne that recently got put up. Um, so um, that wasn't using our panels, but just an example of, of the technology that's um, kind of coming out now. So yeah, well, yeah, that's early awesome. stages still for BIPV. Yeah. No, definitely. Well, it's very exciting that it's coming up. I mean, Chris, if you could, um, if I could grant you a wish, if I was like the solar ferry, and I said, Chris, what technology would you like to see come out next that does, isn't currently out? What would it be? What would you love to see enter our market? Well, I'd like to see maybe a flying car that's powered by solar. Be nice. Yeah, not quite there yet, but <laughs> um, that's that's in the pipeline. Um, but no, more um, tangibly, the the next big technology jump is going to be tandem solar panels. Um, okay. So yeah, so what Tandem is, is really doing is taking the traditional solar panel with, with silicon and adding in different kinds of materials into that um, silicon. So one is perovskite, which is quite popular, and kind yeah. of mixing the two different materials together to really boost the performance. So panels are currently sitting at around 22, 22.5% in, in their efficiency. But these, these new Tandem cells have uh, proven about over 30% efficiency. So wow. it's a... Massive jump, yeah. So that's going to be the next big, kind of big, big leap for us as a company. That's absolutely fantastic. When, when can we expect to see that hit the market? That's still probably a few years down the track. You're looking maybe four or five years from now when it's commercially yep. available. But um, you know, right now the, the best the best technology is the, the end type, but it's going yep. to eventually be taken over by um, by an even even greater technology. So. That's amazing. I love it. I just love the fact it keeps evolving and getting better and better, which is amazing. And as we said earlier, I mean, don't let anyone, if anyone watching or listening had, that hasn't gone solar, you know, take advantage now. But as Chris mentioned, I mean, the ROI in a solar system, just, a, you know, 6.6 .6 kilowatt solar system, 5 kilowatt inverter, you know, you're looking sub three years now. So, um, you know, if, you know, just to have that on your roof right now, in less than three years, you've already got your return on investment. You've got another sort of two, three years, four years before, you know, you even want to consider doing anything, if anything. And the fact is, fundamentally, you know, with even with technology from about three to four years ago, five years ago, you know, your home could be powered for your, your lifetime or for the time that you're actually in that property. So um, it's just good to see advances coming up. Um, evolution is natural. And um, but don't wait, don't hesitate, just get involved now whilst you know, whilst there's some great rebates, federal government STCs, as well as potentially state based incentives available to you too, to uh, to get those solar systems because they will phase out over time. And uh, everything's designed just to get as many people active as possible and then gradually phase it out, um, you know, when mass adoption eventually happens. I think we're about 30% now, aren't we, Chris, in terms of homes and you know, sort of installed. Um, solar things around that thirty percent mark. Yeah, that's right, between thirty to fifty, depending on which state you look at. I think um, yeah. Queensland's leading there. I think they are sitting at about 50, close to fifty percent. Wow, and now um, that's amazing. Yeah, that's right. Well, hopefully, we'll be one of those fifty percent very, very soon. Um, so, Chris, what changes would you like to see in the industry to better provide consumers confidence that renewables are a viable alternative to fossil fuel reliant technology? Yeah, well, I think um, just in the last two or three years, I think the confidence is really building. Um, I'm not sure I'd agree that there isn't enough confidence. Uh, if you look at, like you said, there's between 30 to 50 percent uptake now of um, rooftop solar, and it's also the fastest growing sector. So residential rooftop solar is growing even faster than like utility scale solar. Um, so I think it's it's the support and the confidence is there now. And that's a lot of that is due to the STCs been heavily subsidized by the federal government. So the STC on panels. Um, the next big thing that I think we do need is, is more battery subsidies. Um, so we're seeing state subsidies like in, in Queensland recently, and there's another one uh, for New South Wales, which was announced for November um, in terms of battery subsidies. And I think a, a, maybe a, a kind of a federal battery subsidy similar to the STC is going to really help the uptake of the batteries, which is what we sort of need right now um, to, yeah, to, to make that transition faster to, to net zero. 
No, I completely agree. I think fundamentally it'll be at that point that, you know, the um, you know anyone who does own a home or a business will be more than willing to max out their roof space with solar panels because they then know they you know they can capitalize on their excess electricity you know via storage and then also use that you know store power you know in the early mornings late nights and if you're running a business to pay your air conditioning and any refrigeration or anything else you have in that business throughout the night which is which is kind of what's missing right now it's almost you know there's this exercise a solar power retailer and your installer will have to go to just to do the calculations, the math to understand what percentage and what portion of your power you're using during the daytime. Um, and then, you know, either design the solar system around just daytime consumption um, or if the, you know, the person being quoted um, is open to incorporating battery technology now, then great, this is how much you can store. But fundamentally, a lot of people are just, you know, getting what they, they need right now where, mm -hmm. you know, given the subsidies that are available and which shrink every single year, you're better off maxing out your roof space. So I, I can put with, with solar panels, I completely agree with you. I think the federal subsidy on batteries is probably the uh, the piece, the missing piece of the jigsaw. And of course that then helps the, uh, the grid as well, right? Because we all know that the infrastructure in Australia is very, very old, um, and very limited in what it can actually handle in terms of what's coming back into the grid. Um, feeding tariffs aren't great. So, um, yeah, we, we kind of do need to uh, to assist. Well, that's right. And if you look at the um, the energy prices as well, so we have a, a duck curve problem right now, which is basically where energy prices in the morning, they start off high and then they, they dip down sometimes into the negative numbers where you'll actually get paid to, to receive power, which is kind of crazy. And then in the evening, the prices will go back up again. So we've got this massive dip. And that what that's kind of telling the industry is that there's already heaps of solar out there in the middle of the day. But what we need is more batteries to soak up that energy in the midday and then shift it towards the evening um, at night time. So that's what a battery subsidy could could help us do. Yeah. And now I can care if any politicians are watching, you heard Chris. <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> Change right. policy, incorporate some more rebates. We demand it. Um, all right, good stuff, Chris. And Chris, finally, just um, you know, for anyone listening today that thinks, okay, great, we've got solar power. Um, yes, I agree with the battery. I'm going to, you know, get explore more options for a battery. I mean, what other small changes can people uh, make to move us towards uh, towards net zero and a zero carbon future? Yeah, well, to put it in perspective, so our, our targets for Australia, we have um, 82% by 2030 is what we want to get to, and then net zero by 2050 is our current federal government's uh, target. So we're we're sitting at about 40% right now. So we're we're on track, but we we do have to kind of triple our our speed of uptake if we're going to if we're going to make it to that target. So, I mean, like I mentioned, investing in a battery is the best way because not only can you soak up that midday power and, and shift it, but you get paid to do that via like virtual power plants that are out there now. Um, and other things is really around energy efficiency. So if you look at the the um, program tomorrow that's, that's coming out, the five by four house, he designed that house, you know, really with energy and sustainability in mind. So geothermal energy from the ground, but also he used NASA grade um, insulation to actually make sure that it, it was an airtight house. So the more you can do to, to increase energy efficiency in your house will, will be a big um, sort of game changer for you as well. Um, I personally think like maybe, you know, uh, more reusing of clothing and that sort of thing. There's so much waste right now in, in sort of fashion industry. So you know, all those those little changes can really build up as well. But I think net zero, I think batteries is the number one um, investment that you can really make an impact as, as a you know homeowner. No, and as you said as well, you know, grid independence. So um, you're not at the mercy of anyone else and you're in control essentially of your energy production, energy consumption, and uh, those uh, those horror bills that we've all seen over time um, start to come to uh, an abrupt end, which is music to everyone's ears. Um, mm -hmm. Before we finish off, Chris, quick question about Ying Lee's. We did, um, you did mention earlier and sparked my interest with your recycling plant in China, which I now really, really want to see. Can you tell me a little bit more about what Ying Lee's doing to reduce their carbon footprint and promote sustainability, including that recycling program? Definitely. So I guess that was like a teaser, wasn't it? The, the it beginning. was, yeah. it was. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, recycling, like we said, it's going to be a huge challenge for the industry because you've got millions of panels coming in now to Australia and eventually they're going to reach end of life and they're going to need recycling. So 
Um, we were one of the first actually to work with an initiative called PV Cycle, which was all about creating a circular economy in renewable energy. Um, and uh, Yingli is also one of the first to build their own recycling plant in China. So basically it's a pilot plant right now. And um, George and Tim, they visited last year, they saw how it works. They kind of strip down the panel, crush it all up, and then separate out kind of like sifting for gold, where they separate all the kind of silicon, glass, aluminium, silver. Um, and then at the end, there's these buckets where they you know capture all the different materials and, and reuse. Um, like you mentioned as well, it's about 95% of the materials used in, in solar panels can be recycled um, at the moment. So it's a huge business opportunity as well for, for companies that want to turn it into a circular economy. Uh, there's a few companies that we're working with here in Australia as well that are doing the same thing, um, building recycling plants. So we're helping them, giving them kind of all of our old used panels or you know defective panels to, to test out. Um, and the other thing that we do is we, we build the panels to last. So uh, I mentioned 30 year warranties, uh, but obviously that doesn't mean it's going to stop working after 30 years. The panel can actually live a lot longer than that. So just by building in longevity into the panel, um, the longer they can last, the less they need to be recycled. So the, the lower the carbon footprint as well, which is another kind of important factor. Yeah. No, absolutely fantastic, mate. Well, look, I'm, uh, you know, I always loved the Yingli brand before today, but now, you know, once again, I'm buzzing. I mean, there's a there's a few little teasers that you've uh, you've dropped um, some awesome stuff coming in the future, and even and what we see today is very very impressive. So, Chris, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been very informative, a lot of fun, and um, yeah, super excited to uh, to see uh, to see more, especially tomorrow on Open Homes Australia. Yeah, thanks very much for having me, Rashan. Looking forward to the program tomorrow. Mate, good man. You're very, very welcome. So, guys, you heard it here first. Ying Lee, um, look, really, tomorrow, you know, get, you know, find out more for yourself just by watching Open Homes Australia. Um, it's going to be on at 5 p.m. on 9 Life, so on the 9 Network. And um, if you missed that, Sunday at 2.30 p.m. on 9 Life. And if you missed that and you're out over the weekend or away, you can go on to Nine Now, so their catch-up TV service, so digital service, and you can just watch it at your leisure, just stream the whole season if you haven't watched it yet, as well as uh, see what um, Yingli are up to on tomorrow's episode. That'll probably be available on Nine Now by Monday. Um, if you have yet to go solar, fear not. As we mentioned before, there are still some really good federal um, discounts available via the STCs, so you can jump onto our website, ngmatters.com.au, forward slash free solar quotes, and uh, submit a request for a quote for your home or your business. And uh, we will then um, you know, send that inquiry out to our network of installers. You'll probably get to about two or three installers in your local area, and they will quote you on um, on you know, what they can do for you. You can also check out Yingli on our website, NG Matters. Just type Yingli into the search bar, and uh, you'll go to a page that we host on there, which will also show the TV stuff that we that's coming up very, very soon um, after tomorrow's program. Um, so other than that, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please feel free to follow us on social media. Um, check this out. Um, this will be hosted permanently on YouTube, which you can subscribe to so you don't miss out on any future shows, as well as on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, all the best. See you next time. Have a great week.